There I am. Okay, so I've got to figure this out. No, not that it. Right, here we go. No. Hey, everybody. I am Crystal. Just had a baby, so I have to figure out this stuff on my own real quick. Come on, come on, come on. In bed. I'll do it. No, that won't do it. One second, everybody, then we'll begin. Um, say video. What's up, everybody? Like, here we go. Um, click for more. There we go. All right. I'm almost there. I start a little bit early. There we go. All right. Almost there. Nope. Oh, she's doing it. I guess she's doing it. Okay. Nope. Oh, she's doing it. Simba, not right now, boy. Okay, first off, let me get rid of that. Let me see if we're live here. Okay, we gotta go live on Instagram now. Yep, thank you, Crystal. Okay. Nothing like last minute as usual. Instagram. How do you get your B vitamins naturally was the question. Okay, um, what am I doing? Live. Live. Boom. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Matt Monarch with therawfoodworld.com. Mm. The big question is... Um, right now, how do you get B vitamins naturally? Good to see you, Lori. How am I related to the monarch butterfly? What's up, Everyday Detox on Instagram? Okay. In two months from now, I'm coming out with a revol revolutionary vegan superfood. I've been in the works with this for a very long time. Um, you'll see soon how I get my B12. 100% of it. <clears throat> been experimenting for two months now with it, actually. And um, it's been profound, but you gotta wait. <clears throat> but that's B12. B vitamins you can get from nutritional yeast is a big source um, and things like that. So, uh, yeah. Any other questions before we got any questions here? Let's take a look. I always have to come up with topics because nobody asks me any questions anymore. What's up, Apana from Switzerland? Thank you for all you do, Matt, on behalf of my partner. What is the number one food you would recommend to keep cancer gone for good? Um, where is your, <laughs> okay, um, for, for Sam, go to my YouTube channel and you can type in my story for Matt, under my, Matt Monarch, my story. It's called, uh, 100% raw to di conscious divorce. You can check it out there. It's a very profound, um, story. It's got like 100,000 views by now. Um, it was amazing. I mean, a very, it was a very good uh, transition and stuff like that. Everybody knows about that. <clears throat> well, at least 100,000 people do. Okay. So the number one food for, it depends how you look at this. 
I've been doing videos with my daughters frequently on um, Instagram. You, sh you can check it out there. Um, so, for th so the question is the number one food to take for cancer. We're, we're going to look at this from many different angles. The first angle is um, it's more important what you don't eat and do versus what you eat and do for healing any disease. You could take the biggest cancer um, fighting food in the world, like uh, let's just say you're taking the Rishi Sport tritripine crystals every single day, um, but going to McDonald's three times a day, I don't think that the superfood's really gonna do much for you. There's almost like a fear involved with this type of thing. Um, and that's like, eliminating that would be a really good way to not get it back. But generally, um, if we want to take a look at from this from a spiritual standpoint, um, all disease, or most not all disease, but a lot of disease, especially things like that where you can't really link it to diet, um, has been, you know, some, oh no, my Instagram iPad is dead. I thought I had it plugged in. Um, but some religions and traditions, you know, state that that type of thing, cancer, is a spiritual cause. Um, for example, if you were to look into shamanistic traditions, um, they actually say that people with cancer and other diseases, each disease has different traits, has different traits within their being. Um, for example, one disease, like they draw energy from others a lot, Maybe they're doing it unconsciously, woe is me, like I don't know what the situation is. But they say that it creates an opening, spiritual opening in shamanistic traditions to where some sort of like black spirit can overtake a person and then cancer is involved. And then if you look at other religious scriptures like the Bible, um, you know, there would be lepers and they could easily be healed, you know, instantly. Jesus healed people instantly. Um, so it depends how you look at it. So... Um, it's all about what you don't do. You want to be the best person that you possibly can be. You don't want to eat McDonald's and work on the spiritual aspects as much as you possibly can. Um, let's take a look here. Is it war isn't it warm where you are? It is warm. It's nighttime, but I could get away with a shirt like this. No big deal. How much does it cost to relocate over here where I'm at? Um, a plane ride is a thousand dollars max, if, unless you you know maybe it could be anywhere from six hundred or less to like fifteen hundred. Um, and the cost of living is very inexpensive out here if you're a raw food eater at least. Um, you can get a box of avocados to where they're like twenty five cents each. All raw food is pretty inexpensive out here. Let's see if we got any questions at news.therawfoodworld.com backslash live. Okay. I love fermented foods. What do you think of fermented foods as being healthy? Some don't think so. Not me. Again, it's more important what you don't eat than what you actually eat. So if someone's gonna be eating fermented foods along with McDonald's, and someone who eats fermented foods religiously, but I mean, whoever, and someone who eats fermented foods without McDonald's is a major difference here. The fermented foods isn't gonna cause issues. So it's more important what you don't eat. Now, if you wanna get down to like the nitty gritty of it, um, how is it prepared? How much salt are they using? Do you want to be consuming that much salt? Uh, me personally, I love fermented foods. I'll eat it, no problem. We're actually gonna be talking about sprouts today. Um, I'm on a new dietary experiment. Normally I have cucumber juice, but today I have carrot juice. Because I've been doing this amino acid research. Crazy things have been happening in Matt Monarch's world through the crazy research that he finds. And if you're not on our newsletter list at therawfoodworld.com, go there and put your email address in. I just put an article debunking the complete protein myth and 
sharing lots of information. We'll share a lot about that today too. Um, so I've been messing around uh, with this information and I've been having extraordinary results. And I guess I can just start sharing that with you right now. Um, but before I do, we should talk about this uh, whole entire complete protein myth uh, that many people are thinking is legitimate and that you can't be a raw vegan or anything like that. I gotta plug this in somehow because I messed up. If it's up here, I'll be happy. No. All right, guys, one second while I figure this out. Hopefully I can get this to work. Probably ruin this wire by the time I'm done with it. Okay, that's good. Sitting on a wire. It's worth it for the hangout. Is my mom interested in coming to a retreat? Probably. I think she's more interested in seeing my girls more than anything. She already eats healthy. She already eats healthy. Okay. So the argument has always been that uh, you need a complete protein in order to get your amino acids and everything you need um, in order to be healthy and you can't do this on a raw vegan diet. Okay, so real quickly. What is a complete protein? A complete protein has all the amino acids in it. And yes, animals are a complete protein, and so am I, and so are you. Now, an animal became a complete protein from the vegetation that they ate. It's not the beginning phases of eating the complete protein is what you need to do. The body automatically does that, and as the end result, produces the complete protein. It's very simple, it's logical. And what happens is in the digestive system, when you eat a complete protein, like from like meat or something like this, our liver can't accept a complete protein. The, our liver doesn't work that way. Our, the nutritional purposes of, of, in our, like our, the, our, the digestive purposes and everything we do inside of us, it doesn't work that way. What happens is when you eat food and digest it, make sure this is on, there we go. When you eat food and you chew it down into like chime and it goes through your stomach, everything that enters into the small intestines um, <clears throat> goes past the small villi, which are kind of like su suction cup, uh, little receptor type things, not receptors, but suction cup tunnels that will take all of the molecules, nutrition, from the chyme in the small intestines. And then it takes these molecules, and by way of the hepatic vein, it gets dispersed in blood, and those molecules get segregated into their, uh, the, the atoms, the smallest component they could possibly become, into the liver. Now, once in the smallest atoms, the liver will take these atoms and reassign them to where they need to go and what we need at that moment in time. And if it's an amino acid that we need at that time, it's gonna create amino acid. And it might be completely different than the nutrition we actually took in from the complete protein. So the most important aspect of nutrition that we want is the broken down atomic elements that our food breaks down into. Our liver can't accept a protein. It only accepts atoms to be rebuilt and reassigned to wherever, you, wherever it wants to be. And it's critical that these atoms are living atoms to have the utmost efficiency. There's like a magnetic attraction with the cells and these living atoms. When you cook food, I'm not against meat or cooked food. This is just why I think it's very important to drink vegetable juices and other micronutrient foods on an ongoing basis. In fact, I haven't taken the kinky essential in a while and I wanna take this every single day. <clears throat> so, Firstly, there's the life principle that's like super important in regards to, um, to these broken down elements. Now, many people are probably, so when you cook the meat, these, you're destroying these live atoms. Now you're just dealing with atoms that aren't alive. And the nourishment proponents aren't gonna work nearly as effective, if at all. 
I know that sounds crazy. Um, you're probably thinking, why do meat eaters have bigger muscles? I have an article coming out, but I'll probably share that tonight because I can't resist. Um, I will share that in a moment. But also, we were gifted with so many atoms, trillions of atoms and cells within our body that we can get away without nourishment. There's such resilience there, but it ends up in illness in the long run. <clears throat> so it's that magnetic vibration, that vital factor. It's almost like you take live food from a vegetable juice, from organic kinky central, which is minerals from the ocean that's been converted into plant life and marine life. What they do is they take inorganic minerals, inorganic soil, inorganic matter. And what it does is it brings it up into the plant structure bringing these atoms to life through the plant structure. And now we have living foods. And this is the nourishment that our bodies are starving for. This is what builds amino acids and proteins. We're gonna get into that concept in a second, um, which is kind of mind blowing actually. So in terms of living foods, I was watching this video on, um, I've been watching a lot of Ann Wigmore videos because I've been interested in her stuff lately. And there's actually some old videos of Ann Wigmore on YouTube. Um, and at her institute, I was watching them make energy soup. They blended an avocado with some kale, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of zucchini. And it was, it, it was like one fifth of the entire Vitamix jar. So I only have a blend tech here, but it was right up to about here. And then what they did was they filled the rest with sunflower sprouts to the very top. Vitamix containers even taller. Then they gently blended that down, took buckwheat sprouts, put it to the very top. Blended that down and then filled it, they filled it up like three times with sprouts. Now that's like some serious living foods. If you look at, look at a Carillion photography um, picture with that, it would, that's like the type of thing that shows the life force of food. That would be the most intense living food you can possibly imagine. And that's probably why she had such a high success rate in healing people from the more harder incurable diseases. I'm not making any claims or anything, but there have been, there's been word that she was working with cancer, AIDS patients, and having success. I mean, that's just hearsay. I'm not saying, I'm not making any claims. I'm just saying like she was making incredible things happen. So <clears throat> number one is this, these atoms that the liver takes, we want to be alive. And let's just say you are getting some of these elements from the meat, and I'm not against meat. I'm just saying it's important to eat, drink vegetable juices and other micronutrient foods um, on an ongoing basis to make sure that we're getting these living elements. So the other aspect that we have to watch out for is through digestion, we don't wanna have unnecessary byproducts that hinder the human body which even breaks it down to the point of disintegration if you wanna look at long-term aspects. Now, if you were to look, we're looking at an atomic elemental level here. If you were to take white bread, white pasta, croissants, or any white concentrated starch, the starch molecule, we're looking at atoms at an atomic level here, is C6H10O6. Now, when you eat this, First off, this starch molecule can't break down in air, water, or even alcohol. So when you eat this, this solid particle travels through your system as a solid molecule and does not break down. Your body cannot utilize the, uh, the live, the, it's not even live, the atomic level nutrition, which is critical here. It's useless. And since it doesn't break down at all, it's a huge byproduct. This, so your body will eliminate some of it, but if you're eating this like consistently every single day, this is like the stuff that plasters the organs, the small intestines and things like this. And so what happens is a germ comes in and tries to help break down this plaster material and it turns it into a pussy substance inside of the human body and then it pushes it out through the pores of the skin causing pimples, zits and things like that. So if you're still eating concentrated white starches, this is the most damaging food to the human body I understand that we've been brought up on bread is the most difficult food to give up in the world, but you're missing the boat here. This is like 
you're getting no live elements, and you're creating the mo most byproducts that hinder and damage the body more than anything around. White concentrated starches. Now, I'm not against cooked food or meat. I'm, a, I'm into cooked whole foods diets. But on our whole foods diet, we have rules about eating animal protein. And the rule is if you're gonna even do it, you don't need to, four to six ounces, three to four times a week. So four to six, no more than four to six ounces in a day, three to four times a week. If you do more than that, it can result in problems in the long run. Because when you eat animal protein, uric acid is a byproduct of meat and fish and all these different things. Small amounts the body can handle and push it out. But when you start to eat heavier amounts, like a lot of these guys who are into working out, like I used to be, you build up uric acid into the kidneys, which kidney stones can actually form. And then on top of that, um, the, our muscles soak up the uric acid like a sponge. And once it re reaches saturation point, it starts to crystallize like little spikes. And then it can cause like neuritis, it can cause rheumatism, sciatica, um, Bright's disease, all sorts of havoc in the human body when you have too much uric acid. That's why people ran into issues with um, the Atkins diet long ago. <clears throat> okay, so someone's saying I'm pro-meat now. I just talked about, I'm not anything. I don't eat meat. I'm not against people who eat meat. I'm just giving the warnings if you do too much. Whole foods diets is where it's at. <clears throat> Will we have kimchi available at our next retreat? You know what I just stole from the last retreat? Let me show you. Fermented pickles. <clears throat> Okay. Let's see if there's any more questions before I move on. Do you meditate? If so, what's your favorite feel good method? Oh wow, this is like a long Okay, so back to this whole complete protein thing. Um, we were talking about the body can't accept a complete protein. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The, if you, it works on an atomic elemental level. And if you, let me get the book. Let me get the book. Look, <clears throat> the, complete myth, the complete protein myth is what we're debunking here today. The, the liver cannot accept a complete protein. The body doesn't work this way. The pro, the, if you eat a complete protein, it goes into the small intestines. The villi take the molecules from the chyme that you just chewed down, puts it into the blood, through the hepatic vein, it makes its way to the liver. In the lip, right before it gets to the liver, these molecules get broken into atoms. All amino acids are made up of almost all the same atoms, except for four of them. And we're talking about like 25 amino acids. Like, um, for example, thyroxine is an amino acid derived hormone, so you could count that as one also. But anyway, if you look at them all, they all break it down into carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. However, there are two that also have sulfur, and then there are two that have iodine. So we wanna make sure that we get all of these elements 
it's known in science that the difference between a carbohydrate, even all the athletic and keto and paleo people know this information, the, only, the difference between a carbohydrate contains three elements, which is carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and then the protein has all three of those, but it also has nitrogen. So nitrogen is like one of the key things that builds muscle mass, nitrogen is, that we're gonna talk about in a second why meat eaters have uh, more muscle mass than plant eaters. So we gotta drop modern science here, and we gotta look, because it doesn't even make sense you can't, the body cannot accept a complete protein. The way the body works, it doesn't work that way. So it takes the molecules, breaks it down into atoms to where the liver catalogs those atoms and resends them out to wherever they need to go. They might create uh, something that has nothing even to do with the complete protein that was taken in. Now vegetable juices not only cre don't create uric acid like meat, if you do too much meat, if you're eating meat every day, four to six ounces, it could result in issues in the long term. Norman Walker actually did experiments on people, who, meat eaters, and would do all these urine analyses, did thousands of them, and when they did these analyses, they only eliminated one, tenth, one fifth to one tenth of the amount of urea that they should have been with the amount of animal protein they were eating. That means that five to 10 times of the uric acid was not coming out of their bodies if they were eating it every day, because their body can't, if they're eating it every day, then it's building up. So then, where is that going? It's going. It's being in the kidneys, creating kidney stones, and it also is it, the, the muscles soak it up like a sponge. Okay, so <clears throat> when you break down these foods, and we're also going to satisfy all of your. If you don't believe me, that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna like also go into modern science in regards to all of this and um, show you how it actually, this fulfills the requirements for um, protein in a big way, more effectively than anything else. So, Dr. Norman Walker lived to be about 100 years old. He did extremely well in the raw foods diet. He broke down um, every amino acid in this book, this is his diet and guide, solid guide to whatever. And he explains like this one is 40% carbon, this one is hydrogen, and then talks about all the raw foods that have the elements the body needs. Now, when you eat meat, it, got, it has to be broken down. And when you break down the meat through digestion, there's, to, in the process of breaking down the meat, heat is released. Right there, you're losing some of the energy that should be utilized to building amino acids. And you feel stimulated at the same time. So that's why some people, they go back to meat and they feel so great. I'm not against meat, I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you what I feel are the facts here. So when you drink vegetable juices, this is already broken down into the smallest elements the liver needs to rebuild amino acids. There is no byproducts and it's magnetic living food. There's, a magnet, there's magnetism there that is critical in order for our cells to attract the nutrition that it needs at that time and absorb it. And a lot of the foods that are not alive, like cooking meat, I'm not against that, or cooked food, you're, it's, it's not gonna work nearly as well and you're not gonna be as well nourished. You can eat those things, but I'm saying it's critical to drink living nutrition, such as uh, vegetable juices. Okay, so the one food in here that was amongst all of these different amino acids the most that had the right amount of atomic elements and the in the proportions that they needed for all of them there are there are a lot there was like beets was pretty good over like half of them alfalfa was half of them almond butter would be more than half um even though it'd be in all of them we're just talking about the proportions carrot juice the carrot was the was the best there was when you drink this, I'm gonna do it right now. When you drink this, you are furnishing yourselves with the atomic elements needed in order to rebuild amino acids and much more. It cleanses your liver at the same time, by the way. Mm. That is good. 
after I started doing this research, I started experimenting with drinking three to four of these a day. I got and did yoga. I do, every, I do heavy yoga every other day. I started the day of a yoga set after I finished yoga, continued to drink it the next two days, and then when I did yoga then the, my next day, I, my recovery was better than it has ever been. I went deeper than I ever went, and I wasn't sore as much, and it's, I believe it's because I'm providing the organic, live elements, building blocks that amino acids need. So I've been doing this crazy. I do yoga again tomorrow to experiment again. I think that just because of what I'm doing, I'm going to be able to move four times faster in yoga. Um, I'm like doing all these progressions into splits and I couldn't believe how far I went um, because of my recovery. So, <clears throat> and yes, I'm kind of, this is the only sugar I eat now because I was kind of messing around with low sugar for a very long period of time. This doesn't bother me. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm saying is uh, we want a wide variety of vegetable juices and the biggest complaint that I got was when I was sharing almond butter is not a complete protein. I'm telling you right now that your body will get more nourishment, amino acids and protein if the almond butter is processed right. I have a raw almond butter on our website. It's got to be 100% raw. If almond butter is not raw, even though some, I know companies that claim it's raw and it's not, um, it changes the fats, number one, to where it can actually be damaging to the liver and gallbladder. And number two, it takes away the live elements that are what is needed for proper functioning of building these amino acids. Okay, so real quickly, we're gonna go into, I went to the, I found this website that pulls information from the USDA nutritional database and um, even though this is, I'm going to show you modern science, I'm telling you that this whole complete protein myth doesn't it doesn't work this way. But carrot juice also satisfies all the amino acid requirements in modern science. And I accidentally stumbled upon this. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, let me just take my PT Central. So I just got to remember to take it. Or I just never do. Okay, let's find this website right here. I'm gonna show it to everybody in a second on this camera. My food data. Okay, carrots. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, let me raise this. How am I gonna raise this? Here. Oh my rats! Oh. Okay. <laughs> I just have to. Okay. Looks like it's. Okay, I think you guys can see it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so these are all of the essential amino acids. The other amino acids they say can um, be created in your body without consuming amino acids. Anyway, carrot juice handles not only all the, these essential amino acids, but the other ones. However, it was about 90% of all the amino acids. One of them was methionine, which Norman Walker actually recommended for other vegetable juices or foods, I think, because it has a sulfur element in there. And there was Brazil nuts, filberts was a good one, garlic, kale, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, there's all sorts of foods that were recommended. But regardless, if you look, here's all the essential amino acids. They're anywhere from 3%, which is the methionine, so we'll start, we'll leave that one out for now. The rest are 4% all the way to 29% for 100 grams of carrots. And here's the proof right here. Now, that's for 100 grams of carrots. Now, we're talking about drinking a 16 ounce carrot juice. So what we'd wanna do is multiply that by 4.5 because it needs to be 4.5 to equal 16 ounces. So when you, and then on top of that, when you make juice from that, you only get six to eight ounces from 16 ounces of carrots. 
So then you would want to multiply 2.5 on top of that 4.5. And when you do that, all of the amino acid requirements go to the very end. Some of them are at 90%, so you probably just need another ounce or two to get 100%, but some of them are 400%. So we're gonna show you almond butter also in a second here. Could you guys even see that? Or am I wasting my time? Let me know if you could see that, and then I'll do, go to the next one. So, carrot juice in modern science, even though it doesn't work this way, um, if you drink 16 ounces of carrot juice, amongst all of the essential amino acids, you're getting 45 to 326% of it. The methionine, you'd be getting 34%. If you were to drink two 16 ounce carrot juices, I've been drinking three to four every day ever since my discovery, and my recovery times are just ridiculous because you're just providing the body with living atomic elements that, exact, that don't need to be broken down, they're already broken down, goes right into the liver, the liver signs it exactly where it needs to go. Fastest recovery times in the world here. So if you were to drink two, you'd be at 90 to 700% for all the amino acids, but one would be 70 because it's the methionine. Drink three, you're set. But we don't only do this. If you're to eat almond butter with this, or all the other foods you're eating through the day, you're set. I'm just saying, you, you want the microscopic nutrition that's alive, that's already broken down into the smallest atoms and elements, that shoot in like a rocket ship, doesn't need any digestive work, no byproducts. This is one of these, because, because all this modern science BS, doesn't work, everyone's dying today. Sorry, everyone has disease. There's senile, there's all sorts of crap going on on pharmaceutical drugs. If you wanna go by that, then go by that. But you could literally, from my science, logic, if you're gonna drink one 16 ounce juice of carrot juice a day, you're getting way more usable living protein and more nourishment than any six ounces of meat you can possibly imagine. Do one of these a day, day, you are freaking, this key is consistency. Every single day, every single day. And my recommendation is two 16 ounces a day, making probably like minimum eight ounce carrot, if you don't like sugar. And this is just, you, know, you don't even need to do that. We just wanna make sure we're getting microscope, we wanna do a variety of vegetable juices. This is what's key to get, make sure we're getting everything we need. This is like true nourishment. So, I was like really excited about all this information and I started drinking this like crazy. And I wasn't expecting anything, but when I went to do yoga, I was like recovered more effectively than I've ever been before. Sometimes I've been, before I was doing this, I was doing yoga every other day and then maybe after like, three weeks or two to three weeks of doing that nonstop, I'm like, okay, it's time for me to take like a five day recovery break so my muscles completely recover. And then, I, then when I go back, it feels really good to be recovered. I could like um, go really deep. It's like I took it to the next level. It kind of did a recovery like that in just two days by drinking this. I'm just thinking that this is like a really pretty big thing here. Okay, so he also, um, another thing that I've been doing, I'm a public figure. So my diet, I eat twice a day. I like to push myself when I eat, so I, you know, I'm a public figure. I don't wanna be really skinny like I have been in the past. I want, you know, I wanna look good. So I push myself at meals. And after doing this research, I realized, I, you know, I thrive on eating less food. I'm not talking about like starving myself, but like, eating my two meals without taking it to where I'm stuffed. So I thought to myself, if I could just like eat a fairly, the amount to where I'm full and then I stop, which I'll love to do better anyway, and then drink these and just provide my body with the amino acids necessary, even though I'm probably eating less solid food and less calories, this is actually a lot of calories, but it's probably still be less, I think I'll even look more muscular. So this is part of my experiment. And then, um, after watching that Ann Wigmore video, I got extremely excited of, um, about it. And so yesterday I took a blender and now I'm in experimental per, uh, experiment mode so I don't care about taste. 
because I know this is gonna sound like nasty. I took a small avocado with a little bit of coconut meat, barely anything here, and I filled this all the way to the top with the sprouts. Whoops, what did I just do? Oh man, can you guys see me on Instagram? I kind of just hit a button or something and it's all black. Anyway, there's my sprouts, sp easy green sprouters. Um, if, okay, you can't see me on Instagram. Oh, did I hit that button? Okay, there we go. Here we go. So over here are my easy green sprouters. Those are all filled up with alfalfa sprouts right now, filled to the top. And so what I did in my excitement was I filled this, I told you, with a small avocado and um, coconut meat, filled it to the rest with sprouts, blended it down, filled it with more alfalfa sprouts, blended it out. I, I did an entire tray, I did an entire Easy Green Sprouter and I put it in here. And so I was super excited. I poured it into a bowl, don't care about the taste. This is straight alfalfa. We're talking, this was like, this is like a living food sprout. And so I start eating it. And I'm, I watched this video from Ann Wigmore and then I later realized that that blender that they made with like refilling it a million times was probably for like 10 people. Anyway, so I was eating as much as I could and I couldn't go anymore. I literally only ate a 10th of it. So I ate a 10th of it and I couldn't physically eat anymore. It wouldn't let me. And, there was, and that means like nine tenths was still there. So I only ate one ninth of an avocado and one ninth of, one tenth of a um, coconut meat that I put in there. So I'm thinking like this is, I'm gonna need more food than this. So I was like eating some wraps and stuff afterwards. But anyway, as I was saying, it's this living food, the atoms that are alive in there and it gets transferred into your body. That's what brings you life. There's other ways to get life too, but this is like how food nourishes us through the living aspect. And I've been 100% raw vegan for 20 years now. I was addicted to doing enemas, which cleans you out like 10 times faster for many years until I stopped two years ago. And I'm extremely sensitive and clean to anything that I intake. I could feel exactly what's going on. And this energy soup that I ate, even though it was small amounts, for an hour and a half to two hours, I felt like this light living energy. It was almost like my head was buzzing. I was so excited that I discovered this. Not that I discovered, that I exper experienced it. I thought this would be also part of my regimen to rebuild muscle and things like this. And I felt it like all through my body. It was like almost just like giving my body life force. And what happened was two hours later, I got really nauseous, nauseated because um, my body, well, first off, I started off like hardcore and ate a lot, and that's why my body thankfully stopped me, but I was literally nauseous till the end of the night. Uh, not too bad, but just like, ugh. And so I haven't been able to experiment with it again. So I'm, what I wanna do is eat smaller amounts of these sprouts blended, maybe even in carrot juice, before every meal. And um, so, there's something to this, this living food that's, that's pretty hardcore. So this living food, and what's so good about the carrot juice is it's a root vegetable and it's very sturdy. So these living atomic elements are going to last in there. And what I'm pretty much doing is drinking the essence of the carrot all the skin and pulp is gone, and the living nutrition, the living elements, the atoms, the, in here we've got so many different elements you wouldn't believe, and the perfect proportions to build amino acids, which actually helps build collagen, so it's a real huge beauty secret. The goal isn't to get like big muscular, we wanna build like protein, collagen, skin, hair, nails, all these other things, that's what most people want. I mean, I get it, I used to, I get insecure about my muscles, I was like, I have a big thing with that from my past. I used to bench 305 pounds before I hurt myself eating 12 hamburger patties a day because I wanted to look big. We'll talk about that in a second, actually. But right here, I drink this. It goes down my esophagus, into my stomach. I feel it going down right now. And then it goes directly into the small intestines to where the villi 
take the, the atoms and molecules immediately, send it to the liver, already broken down into their living atoms, and then the liver catalogs it all so it knows exactly all the elements that are there. This is in the perfect proportions for all the amino acids that you need. And then it shoots it off to create amino acids and whatever else it needs to do in the body. There's no byproducts like uric acid when you eat meat. And that's why we don't want to overdo meat. And all the nutrition in this is utilized. In the meat, it's not. When you break down the food, there's a heat release. And all the nutri some of the nutrition is released, is in, done in that. That's why you get that big energy boost, the stimulation aspect. And then there's the uric acid aspect. Okay, so many of you are probably thinking, okay, Matt, if animal protein, and look, I'm not against animal meat or cooked foods, just make sure you're getting living elements from juices and other micronutrient foods. Like, we can go over those in a second too, all the micronutrient foods. It's very, it's very rare to, there's not, we have, like whenever I do a superfoods talk, I have a, get a grip of products I share, but there's only a small handful of micronutrient foods um, that are available. The ones that are kind of like drinking a vegetable juice, they're living elements. Remember, living elements come from nature to where it takes inorganic matter from the soil and brings it to life. I'll go over them right now actually real quick and then move on. Um, King Tea Central is filtered through marine life taking inorganic matter as zooplankton eat marine phytoplankton and it secretes this saline solution right here. So it takes inorganic matter through the marine life and does that. And this has all the elements, trace elements the body needs in terms of like minerals and things like this. This is like a very important thing that I like to take every single day. Dr. Norman Walker used to eat, drink Catalina seawater, which isn't even as good as this back in the day because um, that wasn't really available. Um, let me see what we got here. Okay, I'll just state it. We also have this at cost on our website right now, pine pollen. That's loaded with so much nutrition, it's crazy. It has vitamin D in it. That's, comes, that's just something you harvest straight from nature and it digests real quickly. It doesn't need to be broken down in the human body. It's just a powder. The tree takes the soil and all these minerals, builds the tree, builds the pine cone, and then the pine pollen powder is right there. Royal jelly. This is something you just harvest straight from nature. That's like living like you can't believe it. Burns your mouth. We have these... We have um, this in stock in a month. We have it at pre-order on our website, if you're interested in that. Um, it's like the first organic frozen royal jelly and it has a very high HDA level. Um, what other ones do we have that are living? The Ocean's Alive Marine Phytoplankton is another favorite of mine. It has minerals <clears throat> and the marine phytoplankton is alive. It's a low concentration of marine phytoplankton, but it's living. Um, oh, the E3 Live that we have on our website um, is a frozen blue-green algae. You unfreeze, you get six bottles. Each one can lie, that's like six months worth of juice. Like you literally unfreeze it, you pour out enough for the week. People don't like making their own juices all the time. So like this, these are just cheats. You just drink it and then um, you have your week's worth of, anyway. E3 Light Blue-Green Algae on our website. The sunflower lecithin is cold pressed. Um, that we have on our website that is an organic phosphorus that feeds the pineal gland, which is our spiritual organ. Um, it's lecithin, it's a uh, choline you're getting, but it has organic phosphorus. There's more lecithin in the pineal gland than anywhere else in the body. It's a precursor to acetylcholine, which is the main neurotransmitter in the brain. And then it is also a precursor to um, phospholipids, which is responsible for the cell membrane of, this, of our, our cell, cells, which is really good for absorption. Organo living silica, if you want silica, this is a living silica, it's, it's very absorbable. These all just shoot right in and gives the, your body exactly the nourishment it needs. But I'm, these are just, those are like little shortcuts, but make yourself vegetable juice every single day. Carrot is way better than we think. It has everything you need. Your skin might turn orange if you do like three a day. It's because you're, it cleanses the organs at the same time. And it stops after three months if you do heavy amounts like I used to do. I, I, it just stops, anyway. Okay, so why is it that mus people who eat meat gain bigger muscles? Okay, so here, that's the big question. If the nutrition is so good in this, why do meat eaters have higher nutrition? <clears throat> okay, so when we work out and we rip the muscles open, this is putting... Um, 
our muscles in a catabolic state. We're tearing them down. When we're recovering, it's best that our muscles go in an anabolic state to where it's rebuilding. We actually build size, not when we work out, but when we're recovering. This is called the anabolic, the anabolic state. Um, and the way that, okay, so nitrogen retention is a state that most experts talk about where you retain nitrogen to the best of your ability, which um, keeps you in an anabolic state for as long as possible, putting on size. And the way that m half the steroids work on the market is it keeps your muscles in a um, nitrogen retention state to where they build muscles. And um, that's one of the reasons why these steroids work because of the nitrogen retention aspect. Okay, so nitrogen retention is where nitrogen intake is um, higher than nitri nitrogen outtake. So, <clears throat> So it says right here, nitrogen retention is where our nitrogen intake is greater than our nitrogen output. And experts say that the, in order to build muscle, you have to be in a state of positive nitrogen balance. And the way to achieve that state is to have nitrogen consumption exceed nitrogen excretion. So the key here is nitrogen. Now, there's a substance called purines, which is extremely high in nitrogen. And purines are heavily available in meat, chicken and fish and it's very low in things like eggs goat's cheese and nuts and seeds now if you were to go to google i'm going to do this right now and if you were to type in the word purines like what is a purine the definition comes out to be a colorless crystalline compound with basic properties forming uric acid on oxidation so the reason why meat eaters build more muscle mass than plant eaters is because of the nitrogen content in the purines that they're eating. But the danger of this is that the purines, when they oxidate through digestion, turn into uric acid in the system. And there's a clinical study right here that says the overproduction of uric acid generated from the metabolism of purines, which are high in meat, chicken, and fish, has been proven to play an emerging role in human disease like a lot of the ones that I was talking about. <clears throat> On top of that, the uric acid that is produced in the system from eating all that meat gets soaked into the muscles like a sponge. So now you have nitrogen retention plus these uric acid crystals, uric acid that can form into crystals that are entering into your muscles. This isn't nourishment. This is nourishment. Like, I've got muscle Okay, so check this out. <clears throat> you can get away with meat, but you don't want to do it more than three to four times a week, four to six ounces a day, because then you can run into issues. Maybe you could do it a little bit more, depending on if you work out and things like that, but you know, this is just, this is, these are the dangers here. Okay, so when I was younger, so much younger than today, Never needed any okay, anyway. Okay. Um, I was prepubescent when I was 18, and I had just gone to college. I started to get bigger, and I was really insecure about my size. I would go to the gym and work out, and I, would, I was religious about it. I was mental about it. Um, I was insecure about it. I always had to like check out, make sure I'm big and things like this. I did this every, I literally got to the point where I was benching 305 pounds without any issue. I could do it like five times, no problem. Just boom, boom. And I wanted to get big as possible, so I literally would some days go to In-N-Out Burger and have two double-double burgers for lunch, breakfast, and dinner. That's two, four hamburger patties, 12 hamburger patties a day. Now, don't get me wrong, I was much bigger than I am now, but I was, I, I, I was big, but not like that big. Like, there was, I, if anybody was gonna do it and reach that really big state, it was me. I was, I was going five days a week minimum, four to five days a week minimum, six, seven sometimes, and working different muscle groups. But then there were guys there every single day that were huge, and I believe it's because they were taking steroids. So the meat, 
can only bring you to a specific point of muscle building. Like me, I, I did everything I could. I was building, don't get me wrong, I was benching 305 pounds. I, I, you know, I looked good. I had zits from eating grease and junk. But it's not like that big, like you see in these model magazines or like all these other places. I'm not saying those people do steroids, but like if I, anybody was gonna get there, it would have been me. So just like women are worried about their weight being over too heavy, guys are worried about their muscle mass. And it's like an insecurity thing. Um, so in, to be healthy is not necessarily to reach the levels that people in magazines have. There's Photoshop these days. This world is becoming a virtual reality world. Have you seen Ready Player One yet? It's pretty interesting because sometimes you watch a movie like that and it's like a prediction of what happens in the future and actually comes to pass. We're talking like, this, this might turn into a virtual world, like video games and you can be whatever you want, like kind of almost giving up your current life. Anyways. So, <clears throat> so, if you were to get this type of nutrition for building amino acids that build collagen, we're not looking to become huge, we're looking for skin, beauty, things like this, hair. But by the time you're 60, if you were to do this versus eating lots of animal meat to become big, you would think me in the long run or think yourself for actually doing it. This is like where it's at for building collagen and things like this, building real amino acids and protein, not nitrogen retention and uric acid buildup. That you can do it and be big, but there's a long-term expense. So. Anyway, I'm gonna be still experimenting. I'll share with you guys. I do hangouts every Tuesday night. I'll share more with you next Tuesday about how my recovery is for the entire week from drinking this. Um, I'm gonna start doing the sprouts again. Um, maybe I'll start tonight. I'm just a little nervous. I got a little nauseous. Um, I'm just gonna do a lot less. I'll probably blend it in this carrot juice right here if I don't finish it. And then eat my meal, but it's not gonna be an entire tray, I'll tell you that. Um, and if you can, I'm not against cooked food or eating meat or anything like that, but we do wanna get these atomic living elements into our system. And for many years, I've tried to meet people where they're at. <clears throat> um, like, and I, I haven't really, talked about the importance of eating living foods or live, eating raw food. I always kind of stay away from that because I want to bring more people in versus, and I don't want to sound like one of these raw food guys, like you have to do this or da 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 da. But there are many benefits to eating salads. Salads are key. Those are alive too. Even though you might not be breaking it all down from chewing it and getting the elements you need, the fiber, living fiber, acts as like an intestinal broom. It magnetizes all the waste and dead cells out through the system. Eating salads daily are key. And drink, if you can, drink carrot juice with other greens or whatever you can. The more juices you can do a day, the better. And I haven't talked about enemas and colonics in a really long time, but if you haven't been doing something like this and you start to eat healthier, you're gonna start cleansing your liver and organs and things like this. Um, and you don't need to do, you'll be fine. I'm just saying like, it could aid in the process. Just listen to me, I'm like turning back into like my old ways on some level. Um, but it's these vegetable juices where the nourishment comes from. Your hair, your skin or nails are gonna start changing. I've seen it happen many times. Like less brittle in the nails, things like this. Uh, yep, I got gray hair. Is there a problem with that? I don't have anything to hide. <clears throat> so funny. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Let's see if there's anything else we could. My juicer will be spinning tomorrow morning.
Shred those carrots. Yes. Yes. So the question is, how do you keep from turning orange with the carrots? Do, you could just do a variety of vegetable juices every day and don't do too much carrot. What happens is when you drink too much carrot juice, you're, you're breaking down all this waste matter that's um, clogging up the liver. Um, and if you break it down so fast at such a rapid pace that your urine can't excrete it fast enough so it goes into the lymph for elimination through the pores of the skin. It's not the carrot that turns your skin, skin orange, it's the orange yellowish pigmentation that's clogging up your liver. So it's actually a really good thing that that's happening. So you just have to do it slower. Don't drink so much carrot juice. What if one does not have the time or money to drink fresh juice? Then those micronutrient foods that I just talked about, I'm come, once we, our royal jelly is in stock that's frozen, I'm gonna come out with a micronutrient kit. But in the meantime, you'd wanna, you could take the Kinti Central for minerals, the Ocean's Alive Marine Phytoplankton, you just add that to water, get the E3 Live on our website, all this is available at therawfoodworld.com, six frozen bottles, they'll last you a month, or you could do make it three months if you wanna drink more, it's like drinking of juice, you're drinking straight liquid um, frozen algae. The frozen royal jelly that's coming soon is a big one, the organo silica, if you want silica, the lecithin. Um, there's not that many micronutrient foods. Each one of these is like drinking a vegetable juice. But my recommendation is drink the living vegetable juice and then these other ones. You could literally do at least one vegetable juice and add these other things to your, your diet. Um, what else? Oh, pine pollen is a big one. And that's at cost right now. And by the way, the organo silica is still at the lower price. They're getting their stuff together, but soon it's gonna to have to go up to $49.95. That's the minimum advertised price, but I still have it down. They're kind of talking to me. I'm like kind of dodging them, but it's going up to their map price. Can you do just carrot juice fast? Yeah, you could do that. And almond butter, I'm about to lose Instagram because the time is up, but we'll put it right back on. Boing. Okay. It's not the beta carotene that turns you orange, but we already talked about that. Someone says, from what I see, you look healthy. That's great. I'm 43. Um, I go through lots of stress. Sometimes I don't sleep at all. I mean, this is, I'm just providing information. This is pure carrot juice, yes. Yes, gout can happen from too much uric acid. Um, okay. Okay, well, we've got lots of comments today. Juice is, is awesome because it goes right in without any digestive work. If you eat raw, even if you eat raw foods, I'm gonna get people at news to the rawfoodworld.com backslash whatever in a second. Um, but look, I'm drinking this on an empty stomach right now. No fiber, nothing. It's going straight directly to the liver with all the elements needed to create amino acids and whatever else the body needs. Bee pollen's good. I mean, it's kind of, sometimes, I try to, the um, micronutrients, it's, it's, for something for me to call a micronutrient as a food is very, it's gotta meet like many requirements. That's why frozen royal jelly, that's just like collected from nature and frozen. The frozen E3 live, to collected from nature and frozen. Pine pollen, collected from the tree and put in the canister. Um, organosilica, um, organosilica, oh, Ocean's Alive. It's taken from and put into the salt tincture. The organosilica and the sunflower lecithin, um, those are kind of dried. The sunflower lecithin is cold pressed, it's raw, and has extremely important nutrients that the body needs, including choline and organic phosphorus lecithin. And it's really important for our spiritual faculties, which I've talked about before. 
and organosilica. I'm, this is like a, an element that is, goes right into the system and is utilized. And I'm actually talking to the owner right now to get the exact details of how it's done to where I can classify it in this realm. But as of right now, I'm classifying it as a micronutrient. So bee pollen, if you get it straight without any drug, I mean, it's still good, you don't get me wrong, but there's more digestion needed there. All right. All right, let me just look at news. Okay, just came on, what are you drinking? Carrot juice, great information, thank you so much, Matt. Hey, Matt, I placed an order. Um, okay, so that's a customer service question, not gonna answer that here. Okay, we're all set, everybody. That was an awesome hangout, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you're not on our newsletter list, go to therawfoodworld.com and join. Um, the sunflower lecithin, I literally just take a spoonful and eat it, like dissolves in your mouth. Um, thank you for being a guinea pig so we can learn from you. <laughs> That's cool, thanks. Um, cool. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Next Tuesday night, we'll be here again and rocking the house. Mwah.